What's up, guys? I'm Doc from SampleKings.com, and we're going to look at the Pad Mixer now in the MPC2 software. I'm using a MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. Let's check this out. So here's my software. I loaded up a project that's from some sort of expansion pack. So I've got that in, and uh, I can play it back, actually. Let me make sure it's the full size of it. There you go. It's eight bars. Okay, so we got that. So in order to look at this thing, I prefer to actually get everything out the way. But first, I'm going to press Command-5. That takes me to my pad mixer. Now, it's kind of crowded here. So what I want to do is get rid of my browser on the right-hand side. I'll press B on my keyboard. That's going. And next, I want to get rid of this other side with the channels and the mixer and stuff here. I'm going to get rid of this. And I can see the entire group of pads. One here to 16 right here. I can't see them all, so I can pretty much move this over here like this. I can see it better like that. I'm like, can I adjust it to see them all? I'll see if you can do that. We're almost there. No, we're not really there. So I can see it's not too bad like that. I can see one here, but I need to get more to see one. So... We can't see one until we go over like that. Perfect. So this is my pad mixer here. And as you can see, there are already a bunch of inserts in here in places. And then over here, we have the output, which is the Lo-Fi K kit here. And you can see that right here. This is the output. So I can play it back. Matter of fact, let's mute all this stuff out too. Oh, here's one right here. So we can see we can mute these out, which is kind of cool. Now, normally what I would do is go over here. I'd select this right here. And then as you can see, it opens up here on a second window. So I have like a, a full screen here of my MPC basic window. And then I have the mixer for the MPC2 software right here. And here I have uh, the pad mixer up here on top. So let's drag this down. I need to drag it down some more. Come on, just drag it down. Come on with me, girl. And there we go. We're dragging it down. There you go. And we see that same idea right here in our mixer. You see everything right here. The mutes are right here. And of course, my output's right here. As you can see right here. Mute that one. So it's gone. And you'll see, of course, I have some little parts here showing the peaks. So when I see a red peak... I try to see if I can hit on this and get rid of it some kind of way. There you go. I prefer to get rid of the red peaks and see again. Bring this down a little bit more to make sure I do not go over the top with my output for my pad mix. And the beauty of the pad mix, you can just mix the pads rather than seeing them. Now, when I work on the MPC standalone, I can't see this. And this is the reason why I sort of use my computer too. I am a recording engineer, so I have got to see the mix. I'm a guy who thinks when I'm in a session... I need to make sure this is going to be a hit for the artist. I got to make sure I got to see everything where it's at, what needs compression, what needs to have some EQ. May I want to add a chorus here. I may want to do a few things here and then show the artist later on or the producer later on that we can do this or do that. So having a mixing board up or having this mixer view is perfect for me. And so I'll go back to here. And I suggest you too also getting the idea of like, you are becoming an artist. If you're making beats up or making up music, you need to approach it from the angle of, yes, I did it on my standalone. I'll take the boom, the actual file out. I'll throw it on my computer and I'll mix it from here. So you get to have these ideas in your head of what you can do. In case you do go to a studio and you want to ask the engineer you hired, you can get more help out of him if you show him what you know. So anyway, we're here. And what I prefer to do here myself, when I'm in the pad mixer, is sort of get some sort of bounce going on. And my thing will have to be also that I need to see what's going on through everything else in here. Turn that track off right there. I prefer to see like how much bass compared to the snare drum is, you know? Is it boom bap? Is it give me enough or is it dulled out? And then I also want to add some sort of effects over this whole area of uh, our mix sometimes. 
like I'm using uh, a bass drum and a snare drum here. My snare drum, you know, I prefer a little something in here, right? So I would prefer me to come back in here and I might want to put a really simple, like not too much, but some sort of like different, maybe a delay. A slight delay. I may come to here, open this delay up. I may looking. I might be looking for a slap back or something. If there's a slap back in here. And so I don't see one here, so I'm not gonna probably use any of this. So I'm gonna get out of this and leave here. And I may look for a little reverb. So I may look for a reverb here, and I may put a slight reverb on this just to get me started to see what's going on with my system. So I've got all these things here. We got so much stuff in here. I'm gonna scroll down because I'm not actually showing anything I like. So let's go to here. I'm gonna press the type in and there you go and i'm going to close this out there we go and these are delays and reverbs right here which is always cool to see and take a look at so now i have more options for delays and reverbs so i may want to get a slight slap back on there and so i'm looking for something i could use or get a delay so i'll go with a reverb pretty much i go to reverb right here and so i don't want too much verb I saw just enough to get me something real quiet to deal with. And so you'll see here, once you get to these plugins that we're using, VST plugins we're using, you can figure some things out. It's a like room, I may want a real small room. Here you go, drum slap. There you go, we'll get that there. And then I don't want too much of it. Let's play this back. That's ridiculous, right? Bring it down. Yeah, there you go. Bring the seconds down, it's gonna be short. The room size should be smaller. Let's delay. There you go. I like that. See, widen it up a little bit. Otherwise, it's here. Or here. So you got to fit what you want right there, right? Not too much ambience. Yeah, could go here. But no, I won't listen to that. Density is good. And so I'm going to figure out some ideas, get some snap on that thing. And I've got, already got an EQ here now. Another thing that you could do is add compression, right? So I may come to here, go to dynamics. I get a simple compressor, a compression, a compressor actually right here, a compressor right there, right? I may look for a type of, I prefer to use what they have in here first of all too. I prefer to look inside this idea that they have a certain compression for something. Let's see instruments right here. Nothing. So let's go back to drums. I don't look something. It's a little hard. So this is an order to put stuff. I can pull this reverb down to here. Put the compressor up here. I may want to pull the EQ down. It's gonna change. Now here's my EQ right here. A little hard I want that to be. Now I'll pull it up some. And that's how it start out somewhat. I want to get something going on with the kick and the snare drum. So the kick is pretty simple for me. I know I want my kick to be tight at least. And so what I'll normally do is come to my kick. I'm going to probably add a compressor first. I'll get a kick compressor. Something that's going to give me a feel I like a lot too. So I'm here. I'm going to close this out first. I'm not choosing anything. I'll click on this twice. And there you go. And now I have this compressor here again and what I want to do now is go for drums and how do I want this compression to be just depends check them out see what you like get something you feel is going to do something for you here's a heavy room don't like that at all right so you look and choose something that's going to be decent I don't want I want just classics good for me then I don't want so much of it
I'll do a comparison too as well. Now, I will never hear back an effect without hearing other parts, right? So I know what this sounds like. I know this is chosen by someone else, so I know it's what they wanted. So I come to here. I want to put it back on. I'm back on here. Okay, it's not too bad. So I'll bring some stuff in here. I've got a combination of sounds now. I've got this one and this one. So I've got two sounds that I like pretty much that it's producer made up. So what I want to do pretty much, I may want to put one a little bit pan this way to the right, one to the left. Sort of widen, I get a thick feel to it. Let's pull these out. And I'll do this here. Yep. Yep, getting some ideas now. Now, once you get your mix going on, you always want to check the output here. So I'm not going above the 0 dB level here, right? I need to have headroom. No matter what you're doing, headroom is important, of course. That's the room between the top and here, right? So I don't want my head to go up to there because it squashes the mix. You want to create a headroom inside the mix so that when you're inside the mix like this, and they go to a club, the guy can boost it up. He's got some room in there where it comes out pretty hot. Even if you're in a car, take your stuff, listen to it in your car or someone's really dope system in a car. A lot of guys I know have got these ridiculous Jeeps with systems in them. And the reason why I want to know those guys is because sometimes, sometimes I want to take my track and play it in their car or something, right? And I play it and I get an idea that when they turn that beat up, that it's still going to be that perfect 808 boom. No matter what they do, only thing they can do is turn it up loud, but it still sounds great. It's important to know where headroom's at. So in this case, I'm making headroom. So I want to get an idea between the bass. Now this bass matches out with. Make sure they don't collide. It's got some good punch to it here. So what I might do is go back in and get an EQ. I may want to get an enhancer EQ. We'll say it's come. I might come down. This might be good. I click on this. So what I'm looking for is something to do with the bass. Okay, I'm keeping. My, I know what I'm gonna do. I got gains here. I've got low gain listen to this yeah, that dominate that's dominant right there listen to that. that's pretty good all right that's just a little bit of low gain right there cut this off i'll cut this out and we're not colliding so now 